I don't want to die out here in the valley waiting for my luck to change and I just want my dad to know that I finally made Guys, what is up? Welcome to another episode of Maximilian Mo. So we're taking a look today at a fragrance that I don't know if I've ever heard mentioned, and it is called Mythic by Steve McQueen. Yeah, that Steve McQueen. Uh, and before we talk about Mythic, let's talk about this house. The actual link for the company's website, when I went to check it out, is down. But uh, for those of you who might not know, Steve McQueen was an American actor who was nicknamed the King of Cool. Uh, but he wore many other hats. He was a race car driver, a motorcycle driver. Uh, he had a sort of, um, I guess, anti-hero persona. Uh, which came to be at the height of the Vietnam era counterculture and he became a real top box office draw. In 1974, he actually became the highest paid movie star in the world at the time, but he was also known for being a little bit difficult to work with. He often did clash with, with directors and producers, and his final role was in a movie called The Hunter in 1980. He died in 1980 from a pretty rare form of cancer that was associated or is associated with, with asbestos exposure. He thought that might have been caused by... Um, by film soundstage installation and all the movies he worked for or uh, the materials used to make racing helmets and, and racing suits. In 2010, the McQueen estate allowed a company called Lamahue Design to start making products with the Steve McQueen name. Uh, there were plans, or maybe there are plans, to do watches and motorcycles and clothing and cars, but they did definitely manage to get the fragrances out there. The first one was simply called a Steve McQueen Pour Homme in 2010, and when that one launched, it was $190. I have no idea uh, if that one actually made it to retail or not. I had never heard of it. Uh, and obviously that's pricey for a, a celebrity scent. And then two years later, they released three flankers called Mythic, Legend, and Extreme. And each of those also retailed for $190. The way that I found out about this one is I was actually just looking for scents online that had pine notes. Um, I really enjoy a fragrance called Cape Heartache by Imaginary Authors, which pairs pine and strawberry. And so on for granted, I found this one. I wanted to see if I could find it. And I did find it on a site called Beauty Spin, which had some other sort of hard to find scents in the US, uh, like fragrances by Rasasai and some other Middle Eastern houses. So purchasing this one actually came out to 43 bucks with a coupon code. Uh, it came two days later via UPS, and I would definitely order from Beauty Spin again. Uh, so Mythic was the last one planned in, in the flankers. And all three of these are actually Eau de Parfum concentration. They come in one size, the 100 ml. And the notes on Mythic are red berries and pine at the top, chuli, cedar, woods in the middle, amber, sandalwood in the base. Now, as far as your presentation for this one goes, the box, Steve McQueen Mythic. There's a quote from him on the back. When I believe in something, I fight like hell for it. And just some information on the bottom with the lock code. The bottle is actually really nice. Uh, it says Steve McQueen Pour Homme Mythic. This is actually a steel uh, plate reminiscent of like sort of a Prada uh, bottle. You have on the bottom stamped in. Um, Sorry about that. Eau de Parfum, made in France, 100 ml. It is Eau de Parfum. The cap has a little bit of heft to it, and it's got just a great atomizer. So I think this one looks beautiful. Uh, really, it's seriously, it, to me, it f smells and looks uh, like a niche scent more, more than anything else. As far as the fragrance, guys, uh, fragrance goes, holy shit. Uh, this one's really good. Really good. The opening almost made me do a double take. I was thinking this was going to be a very loose interpretation of pine and berries and just be fruity and sports scent like, but that's not it at all. This one opens up smoky. It's got these really nice dark berries with a smoky pine note and it actually reminds me of a different imaginary author scent uh one called city on fire which was an exclusive for a store uh on the west coast that one is about sort of labdanum and smoke with berries the main difference uh, I would say is the there's less smoke in in this one. This one has more of a green, somewhat resinous pine uh, pininess to this one. Almost like if you could think about red berries mixed with tree sap. There's also something dirty in this one. 
that I initially took for something animalic, but I think it's actually just patchouli. Definitely also going to get some woods in this one. There's cedar in this one, and the base is decidedly sandalwood. So it's pretty simple to explain. Just think of opens up with, with nice red berries, and I want to say pine sap, like a smoked pine sap. As it gets to the heart stage, it starts to become ambery and dirty with the patchouli blending with the pine sap and the berries. Uh, here, it begins to get skanky in a lovely way. And then the dry down of this fragrance is really amber and woods, with all of the sweet notes sort of forming together to create a fruity, fruity amber accord. Uh, it is EDP, as we mentioned, but I gotta tell you guys, performance is nowhere near as good as an imaginary author scent. It explodes out of the bottle, but on my skin, it, it fizzes out kind of quick and I think that's the weak area of this fragrance. The opening is sort of a promise that never gets fulfilled, but it's still really nice. Uh, and, and it's a soft projector, not a skin scent, but closer to a skin scent than a beast. I think women could definitely wear wear this one. If you're cool with like pine and berries, then, then you'll definitely can, can get away with this one. Um, and I think this one can work three uh, three seasons out of the year. Summer, it, it might be a little bit, a bit too much, but I think this could work as a work scent or a formal scent, uh, maybe a bit too quiet for an evening out. If you aren't able to find this one where you live and are looking for something similar, definitely check out the two imaginary author scents that I mentioned, uh, Cape Heartache and City on Fire. Also, something in my collection that when I smelled this, this sort of reminded me of it, I went back to it and it, it did remind me of it, is a fragrance it's called Sensuous Noir by Estee Lauder that also sort of has a dark, berry, ambery vibe. Of the fragrances I mentioned, this one, if you get it on Beauty Spin, is going to be the cheapest of the four. If someone were trying to talk you into purchasing this fragrance, I think they'd say that it's fairly unique. Uh, there is some good quality to it. It's a nice conversation. Um, nice conversation piece basically having a state Steve McQueen fragrance and chances are no one that you know is going to smell like you or or have this one I think if someone were trying to argue you out of getting this one they they probably say that it just doesn't follow through and deliver on that really nice opening it's very hard to find and is it worth it to find it especially when there are other scents that are easier to find that that do a better performance job than this one uh, I'm gonna give mythic an eight an eight out of ten you know, points are deducted for, for, for obvious reasons here. It's hard to purchase, and I wish the performance had more oomph to it. Other than that, it, it's just a really cool scent, you know, like Steve McQueen, and I'm happy that I added it to, to my collection. Um, I don't think I'll get the original Steve McQueen fragrance, but I think I'm going to get the other two flankers. Legend is a, uh, uh, one that's supposed to have clementine, mint, and geranium, and the Extreme has pomegranate, raspberry, cloves, and cinnamon. So they both, both sound pretty cool. Uh, and, you know, guys, this is what I love doing. You know, I post it um, on Facebook about this one, and Carlos... Uh, who's you guys know is Brooklyn fragrance lover. He was like, man, you always find like the obscure no name fragrances out there. And, and I love doing that. I love looking at a fragrance and, and not seeing anything else out it uh, about there. Um, out there about it and, and finding them and seeing what's what's worth it and what's not. And I think this one is definitely worth it. So guys, give Steve McQueen Mythic a look. Let me know what you think. And we'll be back next week for more videos. My name is Maximilian, guys. Let us know. Everybody gets low Everybody gets broken Everybody gets sore